Hi, do you want to know what is new in Microsoft Classic with R32? Well then, just stay tuned. I'm Andreas Wenkebach, Product Manager for Microsoft Classic, and I want to present you R32 highlight features. Additionally, announce some features that are coming soon. So let's dive into it. In context of charging communication, we made a huge step forward. With R32 introduced features, we can now offer a complete ISO 15118-20 stack, an industry-wide unique achievement. A special one is about our new format of the release notes. We improved the way we present release notes considerably. I will present a feature out of SAE J1939 the 76 specification for safety on CAN communication. Furthermore, a new security feature, the crypto sequencer, which allows to chain crypto operations in a rather flexible way. After that, I will talk about an improvement on the configuration comfort of BSWM auto configuration. What previously was quite challenging should now be much easier to handle. For me as a product manager, a certain highlight as I seek to improve the usability of the Microsoft Classic product. There is two diagnostic features I want to present as highlights. The ZEV OBD based on SAE J1979-3 standard and BSW diagnostic parameter calibration. Starting with R32, we offer a new way of DLTO software trace module support. There is two MEM-related highlight features that are in the making that I want to present. The first is the new multi-core NVM Gen 2, a completely new architecture we launched for NVM to allow multi-core. Second is on the Autosa MEMEC module. Last but not least, there is a security certification according to ISO 21434, renewed in 2024. So what did we achieve in charging communication? Already back in R31, we achieved support of bi-directional power transfer. Now with R32, we added support for the client implementation of the TLS 1.3. This allows for mutual authentication and via online certificate support protocol, OCSP, it is now possible to check if a certificate has been revoked. Furthermore, with R32, we implemented the wireless power transfer option and we enhanced our plug and charge solution with the algorithms that have been missing until now. So these four together with the automatic connection device pantograph functionalities for heavy vehicles lead now to the first product in the industry that fully supports all ISO 15 118-20 standard defined use cases. Well, I think that is something, isn't it? Release notes. With R32, we decided to move the release notes from PDF to HTML format. What makes me proud here is in the end not the changed format, but the really improved usability. Whereas the old format had focus on the provision of content merely, the new format is much more pleasant to access. With the new structured layout, you can now get a much better overview. You have a table of content on the left that is sorted by topics. So now you can find much easier what you're seeking. Check it yourself. Just a reminder, you can find the release notes in our deliveries in the same folder as previously PDFs under the doc backslash release notes folder. There included is also a link to the vector portal where you additionally find the release notes and can check for updates. Why check for updates? 
So even release nodes that already happened might experience changes. This is because sometimes we add features to old releases. In this case, we also add the corresponding information to old release nodes. And additionally, we might do some corrections to the existing content. SAE J1939-76 defines a safe communication protocol for J1939 on Classic CAN. This provided the answer for secure communication of safety critical messages over the CAN network. A safe data message always consists of two frames on the physical layer. The safety header information actually is placed next to the data message itself by the RTE of sending ECU. Safety is achieved via the below defined message format, including mechanisms like EG sequence counter and checksum with an SHM part of the message. When receiving, the newly introduced J1939 FSCP module will combine the two frames from the physical layer to one upper layer PDU that is then handled by the RTE E2E profile. Maybe you already have used our vStreamProc component in context of over-the-air update. The new crypto sequence functionality is based on the very same component. In over-the-air update, it allows chaining of data processing. Here, it does a very similar job and allows you to chain cryptographic operations. Check the first sequence where you can see this chaining mechanism. Input and output streams of processing nodes are connected via the vStream proc module. Through combination, Chain sequences can be parallel threads of nodes in which you can run cryptographic operations, each as you can see on the right. And then you join the result of those parallel threads via a corresponding configuration. This new approach provides flexibility when modeling OEM specific projects that need to handle cryptographic operations in certain order. What are further interesting use cases for this new crypto sequencer? Or maybe you would want to do pre-hashing for a signature verification in hardware to increase efficiency. Then within the connected sequence step, receive the output and verify the signature in software. Another requirement that can be addressed easily now could be to concatenate several signature verifications in a sequence. Of course, there's also now flexibility for user interaction. Just add your own cryptographic operation node in your project context. If you have done it yourself, you know basic software module manager auto configuration for multi-partition setups was pretty tricky. I'm happy we can now offer a significantly simplified configuration. Quite extensive user interaction, which additionally was error prone and sometimes time consuming is now something of the past. So no need anymore for deletion of redundant rules, decide where to locate ports and specific action that should execute. Managing software rules for different partitions is now happening as you would expect completely automatically. A nice step forward to save users time and effort. Among the newly introduced diagnostic features, we've introduced ZAV onboard diagnostics with R32. This is based on the SAE J1979-3 standard and highly demanded by the industry since its release October of 2023. Because of this urgent industry need, development happened with really high priority so that we could address this already with our subsequent R32 release. A remarkable achievement from our development engineers. This standard specifies a concise set of diagnostic services to be implemented for the zero emission vehicles. 
we have seamlessly integrated the new option next to existing OBD options. No additional licensing is required. Is there more to come for ZEV? Yes and no. While OEMs will have to follow the standard, they may define additional extensions. In such cases, Vector will seek to support these extensions and also address possible regional requirements that might be declared to be required on top of the standard. The second diagnostic feature I want to present is diagnostic parameter calibration. With R32, a thrilling journey has started to highly efficient in-vehicle calibration. For all diagnostic parameters, users shall be able to calibrate with a prompt feedback. This decouples the configuration at development desk from lightweight in-vehicle calibration engineering. We started this journey with parameters in context of counter-based debouncing. More parameters will be offered step by step in upcoming releases. A substantial effort is involved to provide this new way of calibration. So we decided to roll it out incrementally. The next highlight feature is an update of our DLT solution. OS Software Trace Module Support. On top of the existing tracing solution, we now have a functionality that allows you to directly connect the ECU to your PC via Ethernet and trace directly into the TA tool suite. This is now possible without need for any additional devices. Your system has limited bus bandwidth. Well, use the newly introduced snapshot tracing and star tracing at a specific system event and collect the tracing information only afterwards. The functionality will be extended to multi-core support with R33. This will allow tracing with higher bus loads. So this will be when the feature really will come to play. To support load balancing through multi-core distribution is also the number one motivation for our new NVM Gen 2 architecture. This is particularly beneficial for SWQC and hypervisor use cases. How does the architecture look like? A central instance of NVM connects itself to NVM satellites on separate cores, which can handle memory access via central master. SWCs on any core can now directly address their NV needs to a local satellite directly. A further goal of the new architecture is downscalability. This is highly beneficial to use cases like the bootloader, so we took the chance to improve here additionally. So what do we already have with R32? Well, the rollout began, but for now only for selected projects due to still restricted functionality. The product rollout will occur with R33 and up to R35. We will provide both the legacy NVM and the NVM Gen 2 up to R35. Projects will have to choose the required solution based on our documentation, which outlines the already available features for some time still restricted NVM Gen 2. So if you do not need multi-core functionality, you rather stick with your legacy NVM solution. By R35, we plan to have a fully featured backward compatible multi-core NVM Gen 2 solution. From this time on, it will be offered to all projects as there will be no more any disadvantages compared to the legacy NVM. Another memory highlight. Autosar introduced the memory access module in R21-11. With R32, we initially provide MEMEC according to this standard. Like with our well-established vMEMEC solution, Autosar MEMEC allows to synchronize memory access for multiple users and virtualizes address spaces. Beyond the Autosar defined MEMEC, we also allow synchronization of multiple binaries. These binaries can be located even outside the Microsoft stack. Also on top of Autosar, we offer downloadable memory drivers. 
Memec and vMemec will coexist for some time still. This is due to still restricted feature set of Memec. The decision for this or that solution depends on the project requirements and is taken by vector for your project. So you will receive only one solution per project until feature completeness with R32. With R32, a fully backward compatible Memec shall be the only solution provided to any project. So my last highlight is the ongoing renewal of our ISO 21400-34 certification. Next to ASPICE and ISO 26262, this certification is central for our tier one customers to gain approval from OEMs. The industry-wide demanded UNECE R155 fulfillment can in practice be proven by achieving ISO SAE 21434 certification. Our Microsa HSM product offering core security functionality here has lead and is currently being assessed. We expect this to be completed by Q3 2024. Microsa Classic will follow, and by the end of 2024, we aim to achieve fully certified Microsa Classic. As also, Microsa Adaptive is being assessed in parallel. The goal is to have full certification of all Microsa product renewed by then. That have been the highlights I chose for you from R32 release. Thank you for your time and see you again with our 33 highlight session on Microsoft Classic end of this year. Bye bye.